Octopath Traveler 2 is coming out in just a few more days. Square Enix just put out a demo for the game that allows us to play through the first three hours of the game and everything transfers over into the full game. So what did I think of it? Let's talk about it. So Octopath Traveler is one of my favorite JRPGs that I've gotten to play, not only just on the Nintendo Switch, but just in the last 10 years. It's been an incredible experience. I love what Square Enix has done with taking that classic JRPG formula, bringing in the HD 2D style that they've incorporated with games like Live Alive and Triangle Strategy as well. I'll actually go ahead and leave a link right up here if you missed it for my full review of the first Octopath Traveler game. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on the original game before you watch this one, go ahead and click that link right up there and then come back to this one. But if you're also a fan of Octopath Traveler, I mean, this game is just more, honestly, and in my opinion, a whole lot better. There's a lot of stuff here in this demo that I personally think is just leaps and bounds better than what we got in Octopath Traveler. Admittedly, the game does, it feels like the same game in a lot of ways. There's plenty of features and visual effects that carry over from that original game that we get to see here in this sequel, but there are just little things here and there that the developers have done to make this a much better experience for people like me. Let's just go ahead and talk about the presentation here for a minute, because even though this is a style of game that we've seen like I said, in games like Live Alive Remake and Triangle Strategy in the first Octopath Traveler game, they have absolutely been really tweaking this engine. You can see very clear differences from the first Octopath Traveler game and looking at this one. Sure, mostly everything is still that sort of pixelated style, but you can just tell when looking at this, especially if you're playing it on the PS5, uh, which is what I did, you can really see the fidelity in everything that they are doing to just make this look like an upgraded version of the first game. Things like particle effects, like smoke and fog and snow and the water and stuff like that, everything looks really, really clean here. And if you thought that the first Octopath Traveler game looked fantastic for the style that it was going for, I really think that this is a noticeable visual improvement. And like I said, this demo is the first three hours of the game. There's a few little sections here and there that say, hey, you know, this level 15 or level 16 area is not available to you right now in the demo. You know, those parts of the game exist that we can't access, but we do get pretty much everything else. If you're just picking a character and playing through their prologue, you're getting pretty much everything that the game has to offer from the get-go. Another thing that immediately stands out, aside from just the artwork and the visuals, is the music. Yasunori Nishiki is back again with the soundtrack here, and still, it continues to be just some of my favorite music to listen to in any video game nowadays. Character themes, town themes. Oh, and another thing too, because this game has a day and night cycle, which we'll talk about in a little bit, every time that you switch from day to night, you'll hear the same theme but at nighttime it just sounds a little bit more quiet a little bit more subdued a little bit more mysterious maybe the music is just incredibly dynamic whether you're playing it during the day or at night I, I love all of the music here the dungeons the towns it's fantastic it's beautiful but to spend a little time talking about that day and night cycle I think that first of all I think it's a, it's a very interesting mechanic that I, I wasn't expecting them to put in the game and believe it or not it actually does have some gameplay effect. Whenever you're walking around towns and things like that, people will be out during the day that won't be out at nighttime. At nighttime, you'll run into characters that are not to be seen during the daytime, as well as path actions. Path actions are back you know, from the original Octopath Traveler game, and this time, each character, from what I've seen at, at least, has two path actions. One path action for during the day and one path action for nighttime. I haven't gotten a chance to play with every single one of the characters in the game yet, but from what I could tell, at least the two characters that I used, they seemed different enough, but I'm sure that there's going to be some overlay with all of the characters, 
you know, that kind of get you the same result. Another returning feature, of course, is the break and boost system. This is kind of one of those things that really solidified Octopath Traveler apart from a lot of the other games. It's something similar to what was found in the Bravely Default series, but Octopath Traveler really kind of solidified its own gameplay system here with the break and boost mechanics. Enemies have weaknesses and they have shield points, and whenever you use an ability that strikes at their weaknesses, it breaks down their shield and then they are completely vulnerable to all sorts of attacks and weaknesses and you can just really hammer into these enemies once you've completely deplenished their shield points. That's what the break system is. The boost system allows characters to stack up a bunch of hits or to build up a really powerful attack by pressing R1 or you know the, the right trigger. It's a really cool system. It's really addictive. It allows for lots of I guess strategic gameplay especially since it's a turn-based gameplay system you know you kind of want something to make it feel like you're really having to strategize and really plan your next move and outsmart the enemy so that makes a return and i'm really happy that it's here it's really fun but another thing that they add to this game that was not in the original octopath traveler game is the latent power this is a brand new ability that characters can use from either being hit enough times to fill up a little gauge and you can also fill up that gauge by breaking down shield points and exploiting weak and stuff like that. And like I said, this is just an extra big flashy move that you can use that's completely separate from the break and boost system. In my experience, the gauge seemed to fill up pretty fast because like I said, it fills up just whenever you're either hit by the enemy or you break down one of their shield points. So if you're playing strategically and you are making sure that you're hitting enemy weaknesses and things like that, you're definitely going to be able to use this latent power pretty frequently with all of your characters. As far as the equipment goes and navigating the menus and things like that and just looking at the UI of the game, this game really feels like Octopath Traveler. It feels at home. There's nothing totally new or flashy changed about the menu system or the UI or anything like that. If you played Octopath Traveler, or honestly, if you've played classic RPGs, this is a really simple UI to understand. It's not simplistic. There's lots of features, lots of jobs that you can, you know, learn new skills from and different menu items and uh, inventory stuff like that. I mean, this is a, a, a very straightforward menu system and it's not changed from the original. And I like that because I don't know what would have been changed about it, but I'm glad that it's not changed because, you know, why fix what isn't broken, you know? So I enjoyed just the the simple nature of the menu system. But let's talk a little bit about the story and some of the characters and just my personal experience with who I decided to play first as and where I went after their story and stuff like that. So I personally decided that I wanted to start this demo as Oswald the Scholar. Personally, my decision to choose Oswald initially came from remembering how useful the Scholar, the Black Mage, is in the first Octopath Traveler game. Most of these enemies have a weakness against a lot of magic items and a lot of the magic is very, very powerful in this game. And the other thing too is in the original game, the first character who you pick is locked into your party pretty much until you finish the game, I'm pretty sure. So if I'm going to have one party member who I can't kick out, it was going to be the Black Mage, the Scholar. But when I went over to Oswald's little character portrait and read his little description uh, about, you know, where his prologue starts and what his story kind of is, uh, slight spoilers for Oswald's character, but it mentions that he starts the game in prison, kind of like an Alcatraz, like just some really high security prison out in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Uh, and he's there for the murder of his wife and child. So I immediately thought like, wow, <laughs> that's intense. And then you keep reading and you, you sort of get this idea that he's out for revenge against someone else. And as you're playing through this prologue, like I said, slight spoilers here, he didn't actually do it. At least that's definitely, that's definitely what we come to uh, realize within these first two chapters of his story is that this is someone else's fault. He was wrongfully thrown in prison for it. He's being framed for this really awful situation. And he spends 
five or six years or something like that, just in prison. And one thing that I really liked stylistically, story and presentation wise, because he is a black mage, a scholar, and you know, historically speaking, if we are talking about just JRPGs over the years, one of the ways that you cannot use your abilities and that you can't use magic items and that you can inflict, you know, not being able to use magic items on enemies is if you cast silence on them. And I guess I never quite put two and two together whenever I was younger, but now I'm older and I'm like, oh yeah, well, I guess wizards and stuff, a lot of their powers that they use come from like speaking spells and incantations so it's like yeah i guess silence works and in this game oswald during this whole time that he's imprisoned i don't they i think one character even mentions like how do you eat uh because the whole time that he's there he has like a muzzle on his mouth that doesn't allow him to speak at all and there's a whole part in the game where once you finally get that muzzle taken off in this prologue i mean he has like trouble talking which makes sense you know i was kind of expecting something like that and we got it i, I guess just what i noticed and just playing through his chapter uh as well as uh the next character who i played as which was uh Temenos, the cleric what i just noticed in playing this game and how it presents itself is that the storytelling here they they've decided i think that they are going to put a much heavier emphasis on how the story is presented the storytelling is a lot more rich here you know like i said that premise alone not that we didn't have dark premises like stuff with primrose for instance in the original octopath traveler but here i haven't even looked at what the other characters you know what they're about really because i really just got to play th with these two characters uh but everything seems much more rich much more in depth like you really just get invested in these characters prologues but even just speaking about prologues too oswald i don't know how his story is presented if you choose someone else first but when i chose to play as oswald first i actually played through the first two chapters of his story. Uh, I don't know how many chapters each character gets. I'm pretty sure it, it's probably four if, I, if I'm going to guess based on, you know, how many chapters each character had in the original game. But Oswald, when you start as him, you play through the first two chapters. The first chapter is really focused on just his time in the prison. And you learn how to use his path action. And you're kind of, you know, trying to figure out how you're going to break out of this place. And then the second chapter is primarily used to tell the story of their escape. And I thought that that was really interesting. I, and whenever I played through uh, Temenos' story, I only got one chapter. And it was still really good, but it made me just even more excited to see where chapter two goes. And really, it's those chapter twos. That's where it really starts to feel like, okay, the story is really uh, starting to pick up. So... On an individual level, I really was intrigued in where Oswald's story is going to go, even though it's definitely kind of tropey as far as revenge stories goes. He busts out of prison that he was <laughs> wrongfully thrown into, and now he's on a quest to go find the guy who is responsible for killing his family and putting him in prison for the past five or six years. So if I'm just going to base it on tropes, my assumption is he's probably not going to kill him or he's going to re realize revenge is bad or something like that. You know, the main thing that I'm seeing here just in these stories is that they're following tropes. For instance, uh, Temenos' character, he plays uh, like, a, like a clergyman, you know, like he's a devout follower of the religion that he's associated with, but he's also someone who just doesn't really care a whole lot. Like, he, he speaks really, I guess, crass is the word, <laughs> with the gods that he prays to and that he serves. But they also serve him faithfully. So it's kind of this weird dichotomy, especially if you compare his character to that of Ophelia from the first Octopath game. She's incredibly devout and re incredibly respectful. And this guy is 
kind of just in his own head and kind of thinks he's the real deal the whole time, you know? So it's very interesting. I, I just want to see that character fleshed out more. I'm excited to see where that story goes. Another thing to mention too is just the fact that these cutscenes feel so much more cinematic. I really think that with Octopath Traveler 2, they kind of realized, okay, we got the gameplay down. We know that people like playing the game and like doing battles and things like that. But one of the criticisms that people did have with the original game was just the fluidity of the story and just everything coming together. Some of the story feeling just a little bit too bland in some areas for some characters, not every character, but for some of them. And one thing that this game does really, really effectively, which I really, really like, is just the slight shift of camera angles. I think it looks really, really good. It, I don't know, it just adds this depth to the scene. It actually, like, it's, it feels like a scene. Back then, you know, in Octopath Traveler, the cutscenes really just felt like, now you're done playing the game for a second, let's watch this little conversation play out and then let's get back into the game. But now it genuinely feels like a scene, if that makes sense. I, it, it's hard for me to really put this into words, but it, it genuinely feels cinematic. And it actually really made my experience just that much more enjoyable because I felt like there was more depth to the world, to the story, to the locations, because the camera angles would shift every now and then. And also, instead of just focusing on one character, for instance, in, in Oswald's story, you get flashbacks here and there, and you also get mostly just scenes with Oswald alone. But every now and then, you'll also get a scene just following some guards, you know, just watching a ship roll in or something like that, just to see what's happening on the outside. It feels really cinematic, and I love that. But going back to just gameplay as well, one thing that I was incredibly surprised to find in this game was a secondary job, mostly because it's just so early in the game. You had secondary jobs in the first Octopath Traveler game, but I swear, like for me, it took over 10 hours at least to find my first secondary job. And two hours into this demo, I was walking through the forest on my way uh, to go see Temnos and go see his story. But on my way there, with Oswald, uh, I walked into a, a house where some uh, like machinist or mechanic was, and I, I think that's the name of the job class that I got, like mechanic, but he bestowed upon me a brand new job class, which allowed me to use uh, more than just my staff and magic to attack enemies with. And it allowed me to use manufactured abilities because you walk around his little shop and you see inventions here and there. I think the name is Inventor. And one of the ways that you level up this character is not actually through building up job points or anything like that, but actually through finding items and tools in order to build new abilities, build new contraptions to use against enemies. And I think that that's really cool. And I'm just so excited to see what other secondary jobs there are in this game because that's, I don't know, it's, it's, that's so cool. All in all, this demo was fantastic. And it, it's so nice that Square Enix just keeps on putting out these demos that allow you to transfer all your save data into the full game because guys, I'm, I'm really excited to buy this full game. I am incredibly pumped to see what this entire game has to offer. The gameplay is really fun. The story is engaging. The characters have depth to them. It's incredible. So let me know down below if you actually got a chance to play the Octopath Traveler 2 demo, and I will see you all in the next video.